Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today I'm standing in front of the high school from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Welcome to Hollywood's Hollow Grounds. Anytime we see the exterior of Ridgemont Mall, it's actually this entrance to the Santa Monica Mall. Right there, they show a little bit of it going into the Santa Monica Mall, and right there as well, but then, boom, we're inside the Sherman Oaks Galleria. And every time you see the inside of the mall from here on out, it's all the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Unfortunately, today most of the mall is outdoors, except this one section here leading up to the Arclight Cinemas. This is where the Robinson's department store would have been. Now the interesting thing is, the new Arclight Cinema is pretty much where the old theater was, except for the entrance here would be like coming into the back of the old theater. Now take a look at these movie posters, The Thing and Cat People, both Universal films also in production at the same time as Fast Times. Obviously just mock-ups, but pretty cool. Let's check out the other side of the mall. So down here around the corner, you'll see a Buffalo Wild Wings. Right behind this Buffalo Wild Wings is where that big skylight would have been at the center of the mall. Right above them there. Take a look up and you can see it. Now look at this old aerial photo of the top of the building. You can see the shape right there. That's where the skylight was. And that whole front section of the mall was demolished and rebuilt. And that's what it looks like today. There's still a skylight, but that's for another section of the mall that's occupied by office space. Unfortunately, it's off limits to the public. But I'd like to think that inside there, there's a Perry's Pizza. So this Perry's Pizza is located in Garden Grove, near the corner of Chapman and Knott Avenue. I grew up just a couple blocks from here, and this was the Perry's Pizza I frequented the most as a kid. This one and the one in the Buena Park Mall, because Perry's Pizza was heavy in the food courts back in the day. But anyway, this place is still rocking and rolling. I'm about to have myself one of those classic square slices that you see in the movie. That's what I'm talking about. Another summer of Perry's. I can't. So now we head to Ridgemont High School, which is mostly Van Nuys High School in Van Nuys, California. It's through this gate here where Bradley drives in. You see him pass along that building there to the right, waving hi to some friends. And pulls in right here in the middle of the parking lot. Now that building there, the smaller one, that wasn't there when they filmed. When you see Jefferson driving in here, when he pulls in the parking spot to the right, it's right where that building is today. Boom, he would have went right through the wall of that building. Now look at the building in the background there behind Damone. That's still there. Let's go around and take a look at the building to the right. And you can see the building there. And again, that building wasn't there. And there's the parking lot. We're now at the front of the school. And with the exception of those pillars being painted, it pretty much looks the way it did in the film. That and the bars on the lower windows. A little more focused on security these days. 
Although I was unable to get inside the main building this time around, I do have stuff I can show you from the last time I was in there. During COVID, it's making things very difficult these days getting inside anywhere. Now, right here is where Jefferson comes out of the front of the school and finds his car smashed by Spicoli or maybe Lincoln High? You know, who knows? Spicoli knows. Now, here is where Damone is walking home. And Stacy comes up and starts chatting it up with him, you know, and he's doing the right thing, plugging his boy Rat, trying to get him in there, you know, hook a brother up. But Stacy had other ideas. What can I say? I mean, she's a very aggressive girl. Or just a little bit of a tramp. You know, not trying to be judgmental. Not for nothing, Damone tried to do the right thing. Come on. One thing that's really cool here is check out the, the wall here, the murals painted, the rainbow and the American flag and what I think is supposed to be the Kennedys? I don't know. Still there. That's pretty cool. We're now going to head inside Ridgemont High, which is still Van Nuys High School. This is all on the first floor of the main building. Now there's an interesting little tidbit here. In the movie Christine, the character of Arnie, had the locker next to his. And oddly enough, his name was Arnold the third and fourth lockers from the right. They painted them gray, but you can still see some of the yellow peeking through on these photos. I took these pictures when I was there the first time. Unfortunately, only video I could get was this looking through the door. Eh, better than nothing. This was one of the pickup shots they did during a week of reshoots. This is again all still on the first floor. You can still see those cases looking from both directions. That's the door I was looking through, down there. This is there in the middle of the front of the school. That's the main entrance. And there is the door heading outside. Now we head up to the second floor of the main building. So this is just upstairs of the floor we were just on. And this is obviously where Damone's locker is as well as Rats and Stacy's. That Led Zeppelin logo there on the side of our locker was added. That's a bit of a continuity error because this was a reshoot that was done after principal photography had ended. If you look here as they're walking away from her locker, you'll notice that logo is missing. But there is a Led Zeppelin logo on the door, so maybe they thought that's where it was supposed to be? Who knows? Just a continuity error, no big deal. Now Spicoli heads down the same hallway, notice the Led Zeppelin logo on the door, but not on the side of the locker. And now we're at Mr. Hand's room. Aloha, Mr. Hand. I see the globe right there. Now, Mr. Vargas's room is a bit of a mystery. I'm not sure where it is. I know it's somewhere at Van Nuys High School, and by the looks of those windows, it's probably a corner room, but I do not know the exact location on the campus. We are now at Ridgemont High Field, which is still Van Nuys High School, and you can see the bleacher section there has totally been redone. But the gate is still there, where they have the heavy conversation. Stacy offers him a pretty sweet deal, and Damone flakes. I mean, much better than child support, Damone. 75 bucks on a ride? Come on. This is also the football field where Jefferson teaches Lincoln High a lesson. I thought this was pretty cool. Van Nuys High School Wolves, they kept the name. Ridgemont Wolves, little nod to the real high school. Now look across the field there, you can see the announcer booth is still there, and you can see those apartments in the background as well. So now I'm just strolling through the campus here, beautiful Van Nuys High School. This is a part of it you don't really get to see, because it's, you know, a closed campus. Just the big quad behind the main building. And right over here is the cafeteria. The L.A. Cafe. Now, searching for the spot where Linda gives Stacy a little bit of lessons on how to eat a carrot properly. Right here. And I found it. I was pretty excited when I found this one. The tables have changed, obviously, in the color of the walls, but for the most part, it looks exactly the same. Now, watching the film, I always thought this was indoors, but it's actually an outdoor covered patio. And it was pretty cool to be able to get in there and see this for myself. These guys approved. Now this next location I never got into. This is the shower and locker room. 
It is at Van Nuys High School. My friend Danny O'Connor from Delta Bravo got in there and took pictures and verified that this location was at Van Nuys High School. We now head to Canoga Park High School. Anytime you see the gymnasium in the film, it's actually Canoga Park High School and not Van Nuys. There are two gyms located at Canoga Park High School. The large gym featured there, and just to the right, the small gym, and that is where the action happens. We first see the inside of the small gym here at what I believe is supposed to be registration for first day of school, and there's Nick Cage. Interesting side note here, the brunette cheerleader is Pamela Springsteen, little sister of rock star Bruce Springsteen, who's featured prominently through the film on Brad Hamilton's t-shirt and the bumper sticker on his car. She was a has that very recognizable railing across the top of one side as you can see behind Linda's head and also in the scene where they're going to the stage you see that roll-up door that is very recognizable in the background right there now this was by far the hardest location to find nobody knew where it was but my good friend Paul Hollinshead finally nailed it found it he gets credit for this one the exterior of the gym for the dance. So it's not the same as Canoga Park. It is Santa Monica High School. And this building no longer exists. These are the only photos we can find of it. It was torn down soon after filming and is now a Doubletree Hotel. But if you look at these pictures, you can see this is the building where the V-Dub bus pulls up and Spicoli and the boys jump out. Now check out there, see that railing? There's the railing, that's the railing right there. Different angle, but you can see it. Now he uh, also made this little chart here showing each window, each doorway kind of thing. So you can match it up. This is what the building looked like, an aerial shot. And this is what it looks like today. This is where all those photos were taken from, this baseball field. This is where Spicoli and them would have driven in. They would have driven here. And the shot starts right about here, where we first see the van. And it drives along the building, which would have been right here. And it pulls in probably right about here, is about where it would have pulled in. They would have parked. And that building would have been right here. It's a Doubletree Hotel, which is currently closed, I think, for remodeling. But it's, uh, it's all fenced off except this back entrance. Another side note, Santa Monica High School alumni, Sean Penn. He went back to his old high school. It's Timon's apartment. And his car was parked out here and they wrote prick on it tough break this is over by the corner of riverton and whitnall highway as you can see right there whitnall highway they only use the exterior of this location the interior of damone's bedroom was a set damone's bedroom spicoli's bedroom linda's bedroom Mr. Han's living room, Mr. Vargas's kitchen, and Stacy's poolside change room were all sets built on stage three at Universal Studios Hollywood. So it's here at the corner of Andesol Avenue and Ventura Boulevard where Stacy waited to be picked up by Ron Johnson for their sweet date. I'm sure he's going to take her someplace nice. Steakhouse, maybe? I don't know. They go around the corner here and head in this direction. In the film, you can see on the other side of the street, in this area, a sign for a place called the Oak Room. That's a restaurant that closed down years ago, but now today at 17301 Ventura Boulevard is a pet spa called Bubbles in its place. And the Save On sign you see in the film over in this area is now today a CVS. 
fingers crossed for steak. So Ron heads north on Van Nuys Boulevard, just past the McDonald's, which we will see again later, and makes a left on Galt Street and an immediate right onto Sherman Circle. Right there, Sherman Circle. So here we are at the infamous point. This is where classy Ron Johnson brought young Stacy on a sweet date. You can say like, hey, you know, Ron Johnson's kind of a scumbag because she was only 15. But I thought he did his due diligence. I mean, he did ask her, you know, asked her more than once. Sure you're 19? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm really 19. Ron Johnson, you know, he knows stereos. But anyway, this is where the magic happened or the rape, whatever you want to call it. Let's go take a closer look. Hope it's been cleaned since then. I mean, children use this thing. It's a baseball field for God's sakes. Right down in here. Actually, it's pretty cold today, too. Hope it lasts. Now we head to All American Burger. Now, if you look as Brad walks in, you see that USA gasoline sign in the background? Well, it's still a gas station today, right across the street. Just change names. This is no longer an All American Burger, which was a real place, by the way, much like Perry's Pizza. But this is now a coffee bean. And right here is where the register would have been, which is the door going into what looks like their kitchen. This is located at the corner of San Vicente Boulevard and South Barrington Avenue in Los Angeles. Now, if you look out the window there, you can see the flare cleaners. It's still a cleaners today. Fazio cleaners. And right here in the rear, there used to be a Pioneer Chicken that you can see out the window right behind Brad. It was connected to the cleaners. There used to be a window right here where those things are hanging on the wall. Right there was the window behind Brad. And you would have been able to see that Pioneer Chicken in all its glory. My friends and I used to go to the All-American Burger on Sunset. Here's a picture of me under the sign. And then here's a couple of my friends hamming it up with the employees, having a good old time. Because we were Fast Times fans, we were clearly into it. Now we are at Baroni's Italian Restaurant, which used to be Hoppy's Old Hildenburg German Restaurant. This is where Rat takes Stacy on the big date but forgets his wallet. You can see here it's barely changed from how it looked in the film. When Rat makes the phone call to Damone, I believe they just put a prop phone up on this door. They just disguised it so you couldn't see the door. It was just the perfect angle to have Stacy in the background. If you ever do visit this location, I highly recommend the pizza. Don't go there for the strudel. And now Spicoli decides he's going to take Jefferson's car out for a spin while he's out of town. They're heading down Van Nuys Boulevard. If you see the building to the left there, used to be called Adray's. You can see it over the shoulder of Jefferson's little brother right there. And by the way, we're never told his first name. He's just little brother. So all the shots are done on Van Nuys Boulevard heading south, basically between Van Owen Street and Hamlin Street. They keep showing the same thing. If you really pay close attention out the window of the car, you'll see they pass the same thing a few times. Like the Honda Kawasaki place, you see them pass it like three times. The crash happens heading south again on Van Nuys Boulevard and onto Vaux Street. You can see that Valley Federal Savings Building in the background. And there's the McDonald's again, the one Ron Johnson passes when he's taking Stacy to the point. So they turn here, right onto Vaux Street, where the accident happens. The car goes smashing through this area, which is now a car lot, flies through this, and then lands over here, and right about where this empty lot is, across the little alleyway. 
and you can see in the background that Valley Federal Savings Building behind the car. See it right here. See the sign. And that's in the background over there. Right now I'm standing in front of what was Captain Hook Fish and Chips, which was actually an H Salt Fish and Chips, and now it's our Matt Studio, Yoga Studio. Right here you can see those distinctive windows that were behind Judge Reinhold. You can almost smell the fish and chips cooking inside. This is a different location, but you can see the windows are exactly the same. If you look behind Brad, you can see a KFC, which is still there today, just been remodeled. And the signs you can see through the window are still there as well. No fish and chips, just yoga and ballet. Just a couple blocks from Captain Hook's Fish and Chips is where Brad decides to partake in a little of that tasty cuisine. What's interesting here is right where he starts to eat the fish is the exact same spot where he starts throwing it out later in the scene. This is heading west on Chatsworth Street in between Zelza Avenue and White Oaks Avenue. And beautiful Granada Hills. Now right here where he stops at the light and looks over and sees Nancy Wilson. That is at the corner of Chatsworth Street and White Oaks Avenue. And now he's back up near Zelza Avenue heading in the same direction and doing it all over again, just from a completely different angle. Stacy asks Brad to drop her off to go bowling, but she has other plans. This is actually Leonardo's Manchester at 1735 Manchester Boulevard in Inglewood. She then goes across the street to that gray building there, which is right across the street. The entrance we see her coming out of from the abortion clinic is the back of this building. Right there. And then she finds Brad waiting for her in the parking lot. So right now I'm in front of the abortion clinic from Fast Times Ridgemont High. See right behind me. It's actually in this parking lot where Brad parked waiting for her. And you can see that house in the background. The yellow house right there. It's still yellow. Just kind of neat. This building right next to the parking lot right there used to be Morningside Memorial Hospital. Today it's Harvard Yard Senior Apartments. You can see the original structure there and how it looks today. This is where they shot all the interiors of the hospital when Mr. Vargas goes to show them the morgue. Now if this room looks familiar to you, it was also used in Halloween 2, the very same room as you can see. Now this next room isn't the same room used in the finale of Halloween 2, but look at that light and look at those blue tiles. Look familiar? Halloween 2 was shooting just a few months before Fast Times also shot in this very same building. So right now I'm in the former location of the hospital from Fast Times Ridgemont High. This was torn down in 2017 and they're finally developing it. This is just down the street from the three previous locations, also in Inglewood. It's literally right there. Unfortunately, it's now just dirt. So much like Morningside where they shot the interiors of the Fast Times Hospital, this has also been torn down. So both the interiors and exteriors of the Fast Times at Ridgemont High Hospital have been demolished. So all we have are memories. We now head to the Mighty Mart. Which was right there. As you can see, it is gone now. It's been torn down. It's been an abandoned building for quite some time. That Mighty Mart sign, it was a real place, Mighty Mart. If you look closely at this very bottom, the bottom left rectangle, you can see the shape of the T from what was the Mighty Mart sign. Now it's the same on the other side too. Somebody painted over it recently, which is a bummer. So that was a little bit of proof it still existed. If you want to see the real Mighty Mart sign in person, it's on display at the Valley Relics Museum in Van Nuys, not too far from some of the locations. So right here, this is where the Mighty Mart used to be. And today, it's an empty parking lot. 
This is the only shot in the film where you can actually see the outside of the store. Everything else is shot from the inside looking out. Right about here. This one. That's all I can have to film. Cool. Oh. I was filming in the parking lot there. A guy let me in for a split second and then he got all weirded out and said, oh, you might be trying to steal cars or something. There was literally two cars in the whole parking lot. Uh, I'm watching this place. I know what I'm doing. All right, Hamilton. Although Spicoli's bedroom was a set shot at Universal Studios, on April 1st, 1982, on day four of reshoots, they did shoot an exterior of Spicoli's home, which was shot at Pacific Palisades Trailer Park. So one of these would have been his home. So now we head to our final location and the holy grail of Fast Times fans, 24124 Welby Way in West Hills, California, Stacy and Brad's house. This is a house that many fans over the years have tried to get inside, especially get to that famous swimming pool. And I will tell you, it was no easy task. See that door right there that goes into her bedroom? That door is now covered with a bookshelf, but the door is still there. So when you walk into the living room, there's no longer an access to that room. That doorway is covered. You can see a piece of wood there covering the doorway behind the computer. The room did have two doors. If you look over Stacy's shoulder there, you can see the other entrance to the room. That's how you access the room today. This is the window she crawled out of to go meet Ron Johnson. It's still there, but it's that window in that office. Now the layout of the house is exactly as you see it in the film, except for they've been painted. These really sort of earthy tones it makes it look very different, but for the most part it's pretty much as you see it in the film. There's the table de Mons drinking that great iced tea. And then they head out to the change room. That was built for the film and obviously as I said earlier shot on set at Universal Studios for the interior. Would have been right where that little swing was. Now here's the famous pool. Unfortunately the diving board and the stairs and railing that Phoebe Cates uses to climb out of the pool are no longer there. Sadly those have been removed. Iconic Iconic, why would you take those out? This first door to the right is the famous bathroom, where Brad has a fantasy that most teenage boys back in the 80s had. Right there. Right through that window there. He did his business. And for the record, I only posed for the photo, right? I didn't rub one out. I mean... I was being respectful. Doesn't anybody lock the door when they're masturbating anymore? Unfortunately, that is gone, as well as the diving board. Hopefully the new owners put in new ones and embrace the film and its fandom. I'd want to make it exactly as it was in the film. I'd even build a little change room. And here it is, the iconic scene that was burned in every teenage boy's mind in the 1980s. What a thrill it was to be standing in the exact spot of one of the most iconic scenes in film history. Well, I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane looking at the locations of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I think I covered everything, and I tried to be as thorough as possible. So with that said, it's over. Just like it was for poor Rat. Now on to the next adventure. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and help spread the word.